Do you ever learn an FL Studio shortcut and wish that you could go back in time and teach your younger self? They could save you hours, make your music sound better, save you from getting stuck with writer's block, and producers wouldn't have made fun of you in the studio when you're manually connecting your 808s together instead of clicking Control L. That one hurt a little, but even if you're very experienced in FL Studio, I guarantee there's gonna be shortcuts and tricks in this video you can use. This first shortcut is so incredibly important. This is almost like multiple shortcuts all in one go. What you're gonna wanna do is open up a new track and anything that you do at the start of every single track, you're gonna wanna do it to this one project. Let's just say, for example, you load in one of your favorite plugins. And let's just say you change any settings for that plugin. Let's just say you really like a piano that you'd like to start all your tracks with. Go and load that in. Go and change the BPM to the BPM that you like starting tracks with the most. I like 145 BPM. Go and remove Fruity Limiter or any plugins that are on the master that you don't like starting a track with. And go and add any other essential plugins like Fruity Dance, for example. Save this project, name it something like template for example, and you're going to save it in this file path here for Windows, or this file path here for Mac. Click options, click general, scroll down, and select that template. Go in and click on that template. For example, I called mine 145. And then every single time you click new and open up a new project, you're gonna open up that new template. So if you find yourself doing the exact same thing at the start of every single track, this is gonna save you time every single time you open a new project. The second shortcut is quick legato, which is control L. This connects all of your notes together. One tip for legato is it doesn't just happen with individual notes. You can also do it with chords. So let's just say you build an absolute platinum melody like this one here. If you click Control L, it's gonna join all of it together with this chord progression. Speaking of chord progressions, this next setting here is an arpeggiator. When you click Alt and then you click A, it's gonna open up this arpeggiator and this is gonna turn your chord progression into an arpeggio like this. And you can change the range to increase the amount of octaves it makes this melody in. So let's just say you have a really nice chord progression. You can right click on it, click C, which is gonna clone it, and then copy and paste it. And in the second one, do Alt A, except, which is the arpeggiator. And you're gonna have a chord progression with an arpeggio on top. And let's just say you're an absolute freak on the keyboard like me, and you play an amazing melody like this. You can quantize this by clicking Control Q, which is gonna make the start time line up with whichever magnet you've set. It's important to make sure you've selected the correct magnet. Let's just say you select a really small one, like 1 16th, for example. If you play this note slightly out of time and click Control Q to quantize, it's gonna snap to this marker here, which technically isn't in time. So if you want them to sound perfect and snap right onto the grid, make sure you've selected the correct magnet. But if you do want your melodies to be slightly out of time, to sound like a bit of a strum, you can use the strum tool by selecting your melody, clicking Alt S, which is gonna change the start time. And one of the cool things about Strum is it actually changes the velocity. If you leave it in the middle, the velocity is the same. If you drag it backwards, there's gonna be an increase in velocity. And if you drag it forwards, there's gonna be a decrease in velocity. And you can do the same thing for the start time. This can make your melody sound way less robotic. Another one of my favorites is Quick Chop. And that's basically gonna chop up a note based on whatever you set the magnet to. So I have this hi-hat here. I'm gonna stretch it to make it a little bit longer. I'm gonna grab the magnet and I'm gonna lower it to one quarter step and click Control U, which is gonna slice it up like this. You can then click Alt F, which essentially duplicates whatever you selected and adds it at a slightly lower velocity in a slightly different time, which adds a really cool kind of effect like this. For some reason you wanna undo it, you can hold down Control and click G, which is gonna glue all of them together. Now we have some incredibly handy ones inside the piano roll. Control down is gonna move everything down an octave. Control up is gonna move it up an octave. And you also have shift up and shift down, which moves everything up just one note. You can move notes forward and backwards by holding shift and clicking forwards or holding shift and clicking backwards to shift it from side to side. The next shortcut is shift I, which inverts the selection. Let's just say you have this hi-hat here and you make it louder. Let's just say you want to make everything quieter except for this one hi-hat roll here. You can click shift I and it's going to select everything else and you can freely move around those notes without selecting this main one. Alternatively, you can hold down control shift and click on a note to select or deselect it. This is a very important one which took me far too long to learn. Let's just say you accidentally drag a sample into your piano roll here and it kind of sits in the background. It looks like there's almost no way to delete it, but if you hold alt and click N, it's gonna get rid of it just like that. Alt R is the randomizer which is gonna mess up your notes like crazy. 
Probably not the best idea for hi-hats. When you're randomizing your notes, you can shift the octave up or down. You can change the range of how many octaves um, it's gonna randomize your melody into. You can change the key and the scale. The population changes how many notes there are. You can absolutely crowd your track with notes, or you can make it really simple by dragging it down. You can click F5 to bring up the playlist. F6 brings up the channel rack, F7 brings up the piano roll, and F9 brings up the mixer. Shift D changes the length of the note to whatever you have the magnet set to. For example, if it's a small magnet like it is now, it's gonna be very small. But if it's step, for example, which is slightly larger, the notes are gonna be longer. When it comes time to mix your track, you can double click to select all the layers. Click on the mixer track, or you can click F9 to go to the mixer track, and click Control Shift L, which is gonna send all of your tracks to the mixer track. When you're inside your mixer track, if you click Control and click any number, Number from one to nine, it's gonna solo those tracks. And if you click on it again, it's gonna unmute all of the tracks. If you click shift and click any of the numbers, it's gonna mute those numbers in the channel rack. If you wanna cycle through all your windows, you can click tab, which is gonna send you through them really quickly. This one is really important. Shift Q is gonna quantize the start time of all of your tracks. Let's just say for some reason, one of them is out of time like this. If you do shift Q, it's gonna snap it to the start. And it's so important to remember to do this at the start, because if you accidentally have one that's slightly out of time, you go and duplicate this this whole track, everything is gonna be out of time and it's gonna be such a nightmare to fix. If you really like the MIDI for your melody, you can do Control Shift M, which is gonna save the MIDI, or you can do Control M and then go and open up a MIDI. If you wanna duplicate something in the piano roll, you can click Control B, which is gonna duplicate it across. One important thing to keep in mind, if you haven't quite finished the whole eight bar sequence and you do Control B, it's not gonna duplicate it properly. So make sure that you have a note that goes all the way to the end, or make sure to remember that you're gonna to have to shift all of this across to the correct start time. Once you duplicate it. Now when it comes to the exporting, opening and saving of your project, control S, which is save is the obvious one. One thing I'll add to that, if you go into general settings, if you go into file settings, you can change how frequently FL Studio saves. I would definitely recommend changing it to very frequently. Even in the making of this video, I had a project crash. Control O, you're gonna be able to go and actually open up a project. Control N is gonna make a different version of this project. This is so good if you wanna go and make some kind of change or make a variation of this beat. And control Shift S, you're gonna be able to actually change where you've saved this project. Control R, you're going to actually go and render this track as a WAV file. Control Shift R is going to render it as an MP3. If you want to go and open up a previous project, you can hold down Alt and click 1 to 0, which is going to open up some of your old tracks in the recent project section here. For example, if I want to open up this beat here, I can click Alt 4, and this is going to go and open up that older project. This is most useful when you're swapping between two projects, because you can click Alt 2, and it's going to quickly swap you over to the last project that you were working on. There's way more than 30 shortcuts there, but they're the most important ones, which will save you so much time when producing. If there's any that are left out that you love using, leave a comment. Maybe I'll go and make an update video at some point with 50 or 100 shortcuts. I hope this saves you so much time, and I hope you produce some great beats in record time with these strategies.